When you pick up the phone and get the police. Or you get a letter from your favorite niece. Or census checks, population increase. P.S. That's public service. When you get all the facts about aspirin. Or a new bus service is about to begin. Or internal revenue calls you in. P.S. That's public service. We're here. When you get a license to sell wine and beer Or warnings are heard about smog in the air Or you get free help with a new career P.S. That's public service When you climb in a jet Take a safe flight Or the book you wrote needs a copyright Or farmers get help in fighting the flight P.S. That's public service We're here Welcome to You in Public Service, the program that not only tells you about potential public service jobs and what they are, but provides skills which may help you get one. Hello, my name is Charles, and I'd like you to meet Susan. Hi. On this show and others in our series, we'll talk about some specific public service occupations you might want to consider, and we'll do our best to acquaint you with some skills you might find helpful. My name is Juanita, and I'm one of the four host people. We'll be guiding you through each half-hour program, and I promise you, we'll all do our best to keep the information interesting and helpful. Hi, I'm Hank, and I'm going to give you a preview of the subject material we plan to cover in the next few weeks. Over here, we're going to be doing a lot of things. For example, we'll play scenes like this one, as if this frame were a giant-sized television screen. And during our programs, we're going to be asking questions and giving answers. And here are four of the different program titles from our series. Each program is designed to help you acquire skills you can use in business, or if you do decide to work in public service. For example, we'll deal with spoken or oral communications, how to make your spoken messages more effective. We'll talk about written communication, making your letters and your reports work for you and your department as well. We'll deal with person-to-person -person relationships, getting along with the other person, and also the very basics of preparing well-written reports. Other programs in our You in Public Service series include basic record keeping, interviewing skills, how to get information you need, techniques of decision making, making a good decision, and good grooming. And we'll put it all together for you in a program on the subject of applying for a public service job what's available, and how you go about putting yourself into the picture. That's our series, and we hope you can join us for each of our programs. Today, our plan is to give you a quick look at what we have upcoming in the weeks ahead. That's what we are and what we're all about. Okay, Hank, let's get started. Right. Now let's take some preview looks at the programs ahead. In the program entitled Oral Communication, Juanita tells us why oral communications sometimes just don't get through the way we want them to. When communication isn't working, it's usually a reason. The problem may be with the person speaking the message, the sender, or with the person listening to the message, the receiver. Was it what was said? Was it how it was said? Or maybe possibly something else altogether got in the way, a roadblock. Today we're going to see if we can find a way around oral communication roadblocks. Effective communication requires the knowledge and the use of delivery skills and human relation skills. Delivery skills include choice of words, speed of speech, fast or slow, stumbling over words, filling pauses with ers, uhs, or ums. Delivery skills also include the use of the body, 
what we call body language. Delivery skills help deliver the message. Human relation skills reflect the relations between people during the conversation. Listening carefully, avoiding arguments, encouraging the other person, and smiling. These are all human relation skills. Delivery skills and human relation skills together. They can help get the message through, or they can stop it cold, like this. And after he gave me the ticket, I asked the officer, why was he ticketing my car? And he said, Article 2, Section 1, Regulation 207. That is correct. It says that on the ticket. Yeah, I can see that. But I want to know what the ticket's for. Uh, Article 2, Section 1, Regulation 207. On alternate Tuesdays and Thursdays from September 1st through June 30th, except for legal holidays and specially declared civic or state or federal holidays, no vehicle shall stand unattended on blocks 200 through 900 Franklin Street South between the hours of 0800 and 1700 hours. Occupants of said vehicles must be licensed drivers prepared to pilot said vehicle immediately upon... During the program on the subject of written communications, we'll talk about the points to know about a letter. We'll also discuss active words, various forms, memos, and reports. All things that have to do with the written word, including this song. It just seems that Juanita has received a letter, and this is what happened. This, guys, it's an official letter. I bet it's important. Well, get it open, Juanita. Oh, 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 Come on, open it. Come on, Tom. All right, all right, all right, all right. Dear Miss Brown, pursuant to yours of last July, this letter is meant to inform you of its receipt. It has been filed for further consideration by Unit 1427C, Section 12, Floor 13. Thank you, Jack Smithfield, Assistant Clerk. Hmm. Well, what's that all about? Beats me. Last July was a long time ago, and I don't even remember what I wrote to him about now. I thought written communication was supposed to be a fundamental tool, something to help create understanding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so did I. But this is nothing but confusion. It's a waste of the taxpayer's money. It's a shame for the writer and for the agency he represents. When you receive a letter from an agency, the meaning should be clear as ABC. Communication through the written word should be clear as something spoken, something heard. Clear as something spoken, something heard. Organize your thoughts in an orderly way so others know what you want to say. Communication through the written word should be clear as something spoken, something heard. Clear as something spoken, something heard. Express yourself concisely, accurately, precisely. Report all the relevant facts. Don't be matter of factly or write abstractly. What you want is clarity. Exactly. Letters and reports, quite obviously, should be understood as easy as ABC. Communication through the written word should be clear as something spoken, something heard. Clear as something spoken, something heard. Part of each UN Public Service program is designed to involve you. That's the question and answer period. For example, in the program Basic Report Writing, we'll be asking questions such as these. That brings up two questions. Here's number one. Public service workers are likely to write A, formal reports, B, semi-formal reports, C, informal reports, D, all three. As a public service worker, you will likely write all three, formal, semi-formal, and informal reports. So D is the correct answer, all three. Okay, here's question number two. A good report writer should A, be exact about the facts, B, write objectively and accurately, C, use special forms on occasions, D, present neat, orderly material. There's no question about question two. All four answers are correct. A good report writer must be exact and accurate. Imagine someone giving the president of your company incorrect information on which to base a decision. Now that's not likely to happen because more than one person checks out information at that level. But in your department, the only person between a good and a poor decision may be the person on whose report that decision is based. Accuracy counts. And neat orderly material reflects you and your attitudes about yourself and your job. So a combination of the best of both presented on whatever forms your department may require, is the key to writing a good report. After we learn about reports, forms, memos, and letters, we have to learn what to do with them. 
In public service, that means record keeping. And that means paper, paper, and more paper. You might say, as we do next, paper makes the world go round. What would we do without a birth certificate, a driver's license, a record or two? What would we do? And without all the forms that we accumulate, no payroll deductions or internal revenue, what would we do? Paper, 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 paper makes the world go round. Paper, 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 paper file it by the pound. Go round, 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 what a paper, what a sound. Paper, 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 paper makes the world go round. What would we do without forms to quadruplicate, or data processing, or a filed interview? What would we do? And without warnings, don't bend, fold, or mutilate, or microfilm records to go through. What would we do? is important, but people who feel neat about themselves are important too. That's why we included the subject of good grooming as one of our programs. In it, we'll talk about personal attitudes and work habits, plus the need for good nutrition and care of face, nails, hair, and teeth. All the things that help you work better and help others see you in your best light. For example. Good morning. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah, I've come for the new activity schedule here at the Neighborhood Center. Oh, yeah, the Neighborhood Activity Schedule. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got one somewhere here. I, I know I do because uh, I gave one to someone just about, a, just about an hour ago. Well, here it is. No, that's last year's. Now, I know it's here. Well, look at this. This is the file the department wanted last month. Well, what do you know? Well, hang on just one minute. I'll get it for you. I know it's here somewhere. I know it's... Oh, look at it. It's my radio. Oh, well, I love that. Oh, and my mallet. Oh, I love that. And look at this, my paintbrush. Oh, there's so many forms here. And look at this, my geographic magazine. I love those. And look at my L.A. Times. Oh, oh, I found it. I found it. Here you go. Well, where'd you go? After all I went through, how do you like that for gratitude? Also on the subject of good grooming, you'll see this. I looked in the mirror, what did I see? Two eyes, two lips, and a nose, it was me. And though I recognized me, it's my duty to confess. I looked a mess, so I washed my face, and I combed my hair. I even changed my underwear. And when I reached a point, when I wasn't such a slob, I jumped to my feet on the street and I got me a job. Now, when I look into mirrors, I see gleaming teeth and a pair of shiny mirrors. Thanks to good grooming, it made a man out of me. Another program in the series, You in Public Service, deals with person-to-person -person relationships. We'll discuss better ways to get along with people, learning to listen carefully, asking questions, how to put yourself in the other person's place, and imagine you're wearing the other person's face. Surprise! In life, everyone wears a mask and plays a role. As a public service employee, that role is to serve the public. To do that well, you have to think about your own feelings, how you really feel about other people. 
And you have to learn to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Who's there? Juanita Brown. I'm your caseworker. Oh, what do you want? It's our regular client visit. Oh, boy. Don't you people have anything better to do than to keep coming over here and asking questions, huh? Well, I don't know what you're complaining about. I'm doing the coming over and asking the questions. So what? You're working, aren't you? What's wrong with work? Well, I'd rather be in your place. That's what's wrong. Nobody's stopping you. Oh, yes, there is. My twin baby's sleeping in the next room. They're stopping me. Should have thought about that before you had him, shouldn't you? That's my business. Okay, all right. Let's just answer the questions. Is your husband working? <laughs> like I told you the last time and the time before that, my husband left me. Okay, no. He hasn't been back and he hasn't sent any money? Money? Him? <laughs> That's a good one. How about you? Did you earn any money last month? How would I earn money? Did you? Sure, a million. Please answer the question. No, I didn't work. And I won't work next month. Because I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay right here and raise those kids right so they don't end up like this. Okay, if you do get a job, you will notify us. Oh, sure. You'll be the first to know. Okay, just remember, notify us. After that scene, we asked questions and gave answers. Then Juanita and Susan changed roles and played the scene again, but this time differently. Then in the program entitled Interviewing Skills, Juanita asked this question. See if you know the answer. The first job of an interviewer is A, get to the subject quickly, B, put the other person at ease, C, find out only what you want to learn, or D, Disagree with the other person. B is the answer. The first job of an interviewer is to relax the other person. Establish a rapport with the other person. After a friendly atmosphere has been created by putting the other person at ease, the interviewer can ask the first question. Another one of our programs deals with the subject of making decisions. We'll learn the simple six-point formula to use as a guide, including how to tell the difference between symptoms and real problems, techniques of decision-making. And here's Hank with some information from that program. Decision-making is a part of our everyday life. Some decisions are easy. What time should I get up this morning? What should I eat for breakfast? Those are feeling decisions. Put your hand on a hot stove. You pull it off very quickly. A reaction or automatic decision. Those problems are usually solved instantly. But in the world of work, and especially if you work in the field of public service, solutions aren't always that easy. Some of those you have to think about. Decisions which can affect other people in your office or job. The public who comes to you for help. And even your own future. Poor decisions never happen by chance. They happened because someone made a decision, and it was wrong. I hope it wasn't you. You have to make thinking decisions. All the skills in the programs we've discussed so far are to provide you with the basic tools to work in public service. We can only make you aware that certain skills exist, how you use the information, whether you expand your knowledge, and we hope you do, is in your hands. But during the series, we do hope to spark your interest in a public service career. And that's what our final program deals with, applying for a public service job. It begins like this. In this series, we talk about you in public service. Today, we're going to talk about how you go about doing that, how you apply for a job in public service. Hi, I'm Hank. And you'll see my picture back there as a public service worker. Mine too. I'm Juanita, and there I am as a lab technician from the Public Health Service. And that's me as a law enforcement officer. And this is me as Charles. And my friend here is Susan. Hi. Don't I get to show off my picture too? Sure. sure. Go ahead. Ah, uh, there's old Susan as a census taker from the regulatory and census records. You get the idea. 
All of those pictures are of us as public service workers. And if you paid attention to our opening song, we were public service workers there, too. That's right. But you know, Hank, that's not surprising. Because today, public service employees are at work in occupations representing nearly every kind of job found in the private sector, as well as some unique to federal government, such as postal clerks. That's me. And to paraphrase a very important motto, neither rain nor snow nor hail shall stay my way. Other unique federal government jobs are foreign service officers, immigration inspectors, and border patrolmen. And internal revenue agents. Public service jobs comprise a significant part of the non-agricultural workforce in every state. Public service jobs can be found in units of government, such as counties, municipalities, towns, school districts. More than 25% of the state and local government workforce are employed in public service jobs. Federal, state, and local employees are at work in offices and laboratories, in colleges, in public schools, and in other educational programs and services. They're also to be found in hospitals, clinics, libraries. In law enforcement and fire protection. In housing and urban renewal, in highway construction and maintenance. In parks and recreation, in public utilities, and in natural resources and conservation. In all of these activities and so many more, workers are needed in such various occupations as clerk, economist, mathematician, electrician, engineer, forester, educator. When we consider the many different governmental agencies and programs there are, and they're growing every day, we can see the potential, the opportunity for working in public service. Today, we're going to show you how to get started. Yes. That's public service. During the rest of the program entitled Applying for a Public Service Job, we discuss the public service occupation families. And in addition, we include some information about filling out a job application and about some testing that's available to help you make up your mind about your potential job success. At the end of that program and all the other programs in our series, we review all the public service job occupations seen during the program, so you can become more familiar with them in terms of your own personal interests. Back to applying for a public service job. This is how that particular program ended. During the show, we had filled out applications, taken tests, and now we were waiting for the results of our efforts. Well, I feel we did it. Did what, Susan? Well, we self-evaluated. Right, we self-evaluated. And when we weren't sure, we checked our occupational preference test and then double-checked with an aptitude test. We know where we want to go, that's for sure. <laughs> and then we checked with our occupational grouping. Yep, we sure picked our group and then found out about any possible open positions. Headed right over to the federal, state, or city personnel or employment office and got our applications. We got them. <laughs> Filled them in, sent them in, and took our civil service test. The written, the unassembled, and the oral. <laughs> As I said, we did it all. Yeah. yeah. Good feeling, really huh? Did. Just one thing. Well, what's that? Well, yeah, tell us. Susan, did we forget them? Well, I was just wondering. I hope we passed. Oh, oh come on. No boy, problem. No question yeah. about it. I'm sure. sure we did. Oh, by the way, Sue, uh, the mailman left this for you. It's from them. Uh, oh, oh, public oh, service. Come yeah. on, let's oh, go. Let's see what you did. I passed. Yeah, yeah, I'm in public service. Out of sight. Fantastic. It's not easy, but hundreds of thousands of people have made it. If you're interested, maybe a career in public service is just for you. If you follow the routines we outlined today and do a little checking on your own, it might help put you in public service. When you pick up the phone and get the police Or you get a letter from your favorite niece Or census checks, population increase P.S. That's public service When you get all the facts about aspirants Or a new bus service is about to begin Or internal revenue calls you in P.S. That's public service We're here Because you need what we do. We're here to provide that service for you. Just for you. Just for you. When 
you get a license to sell wine and beer. Or warnings are heard about smog in the air. Or you get free help with a new career. B.S. That's public service. When you climb in a jet, take a safe flight. Or the book you wrote needs a copyright. Or farmers can't help in fighting the flight. B.S. That's public service.